Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 38. And as always, I thank you for tuning in, subscribing to my YouTube channel, and for all the great feedback. Thank you very much. Uh, in today's Tip of the Day, I am going to show you an interesting little thing that I found. I don't know how useful it will be to all of you. Uh, I have no idea if it'll be useful at all, but sometimes I find little bits and bobs when I'm poking around in the guts of Source Filmmaker, and I thought this one would be interesting to share with you. So, <clears throat> what is it that I'm talking about? I am referring to some attributes of cameras that allow you to set, sort of like the way you can set the minimum and maximum distance for lights, you can set the minimum and maximum distance for a camera so you can deter determine how far a camera will look uh, so it won't pick up things past a certain point or it won't pick up things closer than a certain point. And you do that by modifying these values here, the Z near and Z far attributes. A word of warning before you get started. I've said it before, the element viewer, here there be dragons. I have discovered this personally. Do not ever, ever, ever set the near to anything equal to or greater than the far. I would recommend keeping near much lower than far by at least 100 points, or 100, 100 uh, by at least a value of 100, because if you don't, Source Filmmaker will crash. So, a word of warning, you have been warned. Don't set, them, uh, don't set the near closer than the far, or Source Filmmaker will tank on you. So, <clears throat> knowing that, let's, uh, let's try this. Let's set the Z near to, say, 100, and the spy disappears as you might imagine. So if I select the camera and we go here. Now if I back up though, then all of a sudden the spy does appear. So what's going on here is that the the near attribute is now set in such a way that the uh, uh, only things past that, and the numbers I believe are in hammer units, which don't necessarily correspond to any real uh, uh, real world values, but they are how maps and source are uh, how, uh, how the how the size units in source work. They're called hammer units. So, uh, yeah, so that's the Z near and the Z far attribute, as I'm sure you can figure out. Let me set Z near a little closer. We'll set Z near to 50, and that means if I go here, see, we can see that he starts to disappear. And if I set Z far to 150, then we can see that uh, the, let me set this actually to 75. And we'll set this to 200. And uh, no, I want you to actually be able to see. There we go. So now we have this roving band of visible area that the camera can actually detect, and uh, it is based on the distance from the camera's focal point, from the from what would be the lens if this was a real camera. And note that this applies to everything in the field of view. It applies to the uh, uh, the map and it applies to the background and everything. Uh, the reason that we are seeing this background here uh, once the camera is not showing anything is that once uh, uh, you once you no longer once the, whatever the camera does not pick up in the map it is going to show you the skybox and that's what we're seeing right now I believe. Uh, so as I said this may not be a perfect solution for some of the things that you might want to try but I can imagine a couple of scenarios where I might use this uh, especially for high angle shots might where you might not want to pick something up that's in the background but you do want to pick up something in the foreground uh, or for custom made maps that don't have a skybox things like that uh, you can probably figure out a few things to do with this uh, again I find little things that are kind of like oh that's interesting, and I have no idea how useful it'll be to you, but I hope that you will get something out of it, or at least the knowledge that it is there has increased your knowledge, and really, <laughs> that's all I'm here for. So, with that, that is your tip of the day for this Friday, and I will be back on Monday with tip of the day number 39. Again, thank you for tuning in, and uh, share it with all your friends, and tell them about this. If they're, if they're into Source Filmmaker, tell them about the tip of the day, uh, because I would love to be able to share this with as many people as possible. So, again, I thank you. I am Jimmer Linz, and I appreciate you watching. I hope you have, you're having a great day, and I hope you really enjoy your Labor Day weekend if you're uh, in the U.S., and I just hope you enjoy your weekend if you're not, and uh, enjoy using Source Filmmaker.